<laughs> Welcome everybody to our discussion on, uh, for data on wheels about Android Auto and how IT is changing everything uh, and especially uh, the car. Um, thanks all for attending on this really nice summer day. Uh, <laughs> I feel with you. And um, we have some really good experts here on stage. They are not only really uh, experts on their fields but also very nice. Uh, <laughs> I got some of them to know. And uh, I hope that uh, despite of this, um, the discussion will uh, not only nice, but s maybe s uh, we get some um, uh, disputes here, <laughs> um, so that's not too boring. <laughs> so I will uh, start um, with. Uh, oh, maybe we just uh, everybody maybe just uh, say some words about where they are from, what they are doing, and why they are here. And maybe we can start with you. Yes, my name is Gerd Leutner. I'm a lawyer, so not a technical person at all, but very interested in these things. Uh, I'm a partner in a law firm here in Berlin, and we have a special task force, so to speak, that deals with uh, smart and future mobility solutions and challenges, and that's why I'm sitting here. Okay, my name is Thomas Frank. I'm director at Mobility Media, a Bosch startup here in Berlin. And my focus at uh, Mobility Media is uh, developing consumer-centric connected car solutions, and I'm product responsible for connected drive lock. Hi, I'm Jörn. Um, I'm working at Fraunhofer uh, ISAC, uh, that's the Institute for Applied and Integrated Security. I'm heading there the Department for Secure Software Engineering, and we develop together with uh, suppliers and OEMs um, security concepts in the automotive domain. I'm Stefan, uh, tech reporter at Die Welt here in Berlin. Yes, hello, I'm Patrick. Um, I have been working in the field of autonomous driving for six years now. My background is a, a business administration one, and I founded a company um, focused on driver assistance systems uh, for special trucks and uh, consulting services around autonomous services. Together with some colleagues from the Free University, this is where we all come from, um, the chair of artificial intelligence. So I'd like to share my perspective on how it is to found a company in this space and um, yeah, come into a very established uh, business sector as a young company. Uh, hi, my name is Angelos and I'm working as a software engineer for ATS Advanced Telematics over here in the city, and we're working on automotive telematics. So, my first question is to uh, you, Thomas. Um, how afraid are car makers and tier one suppliers like Bosch of Google? I mean, uh, in the automotive area, I think, it's a, I think it's a big question. It's probably not so easy to answer. Uh, also, maybe it's easy to answer because I think there are, in the automotive area there are new players coming like Google and, 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 and Apple, for example, but on the other hand also in the connected car area, a lot of other companies that are not working traditionally in the automotive area. So there's a lot of competency and I think um, um, car manufacturers and suppliers still have the automotive expertise, so um, I think there is probably there's the biggest uh, benefit for them um, to, to achieve solutions that are really uh, relevant for the market. And I also think uh, um, from that point uh, that there's a transforming process within the uh, suppliers and, and OEMs to really support from a, from a, from a, from a production perspective uh, in a really short-term solutions. There is probably not really uh, what is so far traditionally done in the OEM business. So, but um, isn't you, you said it's very complex. Uh, the companies like Google will take time to get into the space. But on the other hand, you see Tesla, they just developed a car out of nowhere for, for many uh, um, experts on that industry. So maybe, yeah, maybe uh, do you think that uh, the, the big car makers did you have some years? Uh, uh, how, how, may, how long is the, the time period they have to adopt to this new kind of... Uh, I think they are place. adopting already. They started this, this process already, so it's not a question of whether they adopt and, and when they adopt. It's more, uh, I think, a continuous process for them. Um, I mean, they are not 
or they think in, in different product development cycles than probably uh, companies like Google or even Tesla is trying to do. So something like a, like like the ability to do an uh, over the air update for for let's say an HMI or something like that that Tesla is uh, uh, currently uh, doing is really new for them. On, on the other hand, but uh, we also have to make sure that there is a, a high level of safety and security applied to that because you are can uh, you have the opportunity to interact with the car and you can also uh, in, in worst case do harm uh, these this kind of while in process of driving, and you should avoid this at, at, all, at all means. You want to say something? <laughs> yes, perhaps one, one additional point regarding German car makers. They are uh, in part reconsidering their concept of selling cars. They're rather looking at selling mobility at one point in time, which means they do not necessarily sell a car to the end user, but make available cars and then sell the services to use these cars. That's something that BMW is talking about, for example. So that's really a new role for car manufacturers and I think they are trying to adopt to new times quite quickly. Mm. We have a lot of Android developers here in our audience, so I think most, a lot of them are thinking about how to develop uh, software for autos, uh, uh, for cars. Is it, is it something that is easy? Is it something that is Hard, uh, what, what would you say? I would say it is not that the most difficult thing right now, since there is already experience on how to work. There is a knowledge base on how you can develop on, upon these platforms, and the Android provides you with the necessary tools. It is supported by, uh, by Google and other big organizations that can help you to enable you to add value on what you are doing on, on these platforms. So it is considerably easier than it was a few years ago when they were completely closed platforms and you had to pass through the manufacturer themselves mm. in order to get your software installed on them. But the one thing is to develop the software. You, uh, you, you think that someone who ha is an um, experienced developer on Android, a smartphone platform, will have the, the, the um, means to, to just develop a, a software uh, on the car. But the other thing is how do you get in contact with the big players? There's, I think there's a, the big boys club of tier one suppliers, OEMs, uh, car makers. You started a business in this space. How, how difficult was it to, to get into this, this space? Um, well, first of all, maybe one sentence to yeah, the uh, comment. Um, software for cars, I think maybe uh, it's uh, very obvious that we have to differentiate a little bit for what purpose we develop. Um, for on the safety-related uh, level, uh, it's, uh, we have some experts yeah. here that uh, could argue that uh, there is a certain um, uh, uh, expertise uh, needed to, to start developing for safety related functions. Um, but um, I really uh, think that's a great chance for developers to start on the infotainment sector and uh, yeah, get, a, get a feel what is possible in the car, use the new uh, uh, possibilities to influence the HMI and um, who knows, maybe there will be a certain levels uh, available uh, for the uh, other core functions, but uh, right now we are talking about completely different levels. Yes. Of course. And, and yeah, to your question, yeah. sorry. Um, well, actually we uh, mm, received a lot of uh, good feedback because um, OAMs and Tier 1s uh, uh, went through a change during the last years, I think. Um, when, when we started with the topic of autonomous driving, for example, um, I can uh, remember some some moments uh, in 2012 uh, when I visited an event and uh, there, uh, there was one professor um, promoting the Google car concept and uh, the host of the event, very established uh, engineer, uh, commented, yes, but we will never have this because uh, you know how it is, we don't even trust our phones today. And um, I think this uh, changed very much and um, I... Uh, appreciate the media jumping on the topic um, so nobody trying to protect the status quo can uh, um, do the same thing he did during the last years without opening up for fresh ideas and that's um, where we come in I think um, our we do a lot of consultancy for OAMs in this uh, space because some of them really missed uh, the change a little bit or um, yeah didn't invest into uh, R&D uh, from, from the start and now have to catch up a little bit. 
and uh, we help them catching up. And um, we often notice that um, it's very um, easy for us using the tools we are uh, used from the uh, robotic field to um, make a change there because um, we see that there have been established structures for good reasons, for safety, for quality management, but um, a certain level of um, yeah, mm, structures that we bring a, a fresh wind in, is that an English expression? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I, see. So, I think a good parallelization would be with the actual, with the smartphone market itself, where 15 years ago we had phones which could actually call each other, and nowadays Android and all the similar platforms, they enable to add applications that can do literally everything, and that is what we are seeing in the automotive sector right now. It is not that we are going to rewrite all the low-level things, but mm. we are actually going to build on top of them. Uh, it's more like what it was happening with the smartphones 10 years ago or so. Okay. So maybe one clar clarification, because not everybody here is uh, f uh, familiar with the, um, the, the words of the industry. So OEMs are the, the car makers when we speak of OEMs, and tier one is uh, the big suppliers like Bosch, for example, for the car makers. Um, Everybody mentioned security, and you're an expert on security here. Um, do you trust the electronics of your car? <laughs> First of all, I don't own one, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> Me neither, by the way. <laughs> Nevertheless, um, I think it works, obviously, so we don't see so many incidents. But uh, I guess, or we think the threat landscape is changing quickly. It's the connectivity, it's the um, consolidation on stand standard IT um, uh, components, like um, Android. <laughs> um, and you have something like um, um, the uh, softwareization of the car makers. So you need more and more software to implement uh, functionality for the car. Mm -hmm. And so this new uh, threat, uh, threat landscape will change also will rise the need for security concepts, new security concepts. So by now, by the time speaking, I guess, the systems are secure enough. But uh, within this new threat landscape, we will need new security concepts implemented in the cars. Otherwise, we will see more incidents, unfortunately. Mm. And perhaps a little distinction here as well. You have security and you have safety. Safety is just functional things. Mm. You have to, the, the car does what it is ought to do. And you have security, you try to defend your system against uh, attackers. So this is uh, the new idea of connecti connectivity in the car. So you have a broad attack surface uh, now for cars as well. And this is mm. the new story there from my point of view. And do you expect the, the car to get m m unsecure with, with uh, the, the step to a more open development? Um, um, with, with Android, uh, uh, Android Auto and external developers? Is the Android developers seen major enough to, to uh, develop software for cars? We have this distinction already as well. Um, for example, HMI things uh, or the um, uh, like multimedia stuff that's not related to the safety functions of the car, at least not immediately. Mm. So these things are happening now and I guess there will be experiences but not so many faults that are safety critical mm. on the, uh, from the tech side. But um, talking about connectivity in the large, like autonomous driving or piloted driving, this will need new security concepts to protect this as well, because if the software is taking over, <laughs> you need uh, new things to do there. And um, whether they are mature or not, I guess there's a large field, so you can't say just Android community is not ripe enough mm. or mature enough, uh, but there will be companies, or there are companies already aiming at security more, and there's one Kirk Kerkhoff's principle from cryptography that's saying um, only an open design is secure. So if you have the old landscape, like more closed, more, mm. more hidden, everybody's secret. Um, so this is perhaps not the ideal consolation for security. security and if there is new mm. open design coming mm. into the market, this perhaps even might bolster security in mm. the market. So, but not just uh, Android developer uh, programming the brake system. This will not work at all. Maybe some comment on that, um, on your question. Um, 
there's one uh, very uh, unifying element uh, uh, in both worlds and uh, we're all waiting for a, a Linux kernel which is uh, certified for safety related uh, functions and uh, real time uh, has all the real time capacities we need so mm. this is a different uh, topic but uh, very closely linked to uh, everything we do I think and um, there are different organizations not the Open Automotive Alliance but the uh, OSADL, for example, the mm. Open Source Automation Development Lab, uh, which is pushing that forward, and um, some manufacturers, which I don't, I'm not sure, true, but did not join the Open Automo Automotive Alliance, like BMW. They are in the other uh, consortium. Uh, BMW Car IT is very active in pushing the Linux kernel forward, which is for us even more important. <laughs> mm, I see. But uh, but uh, I think one, one thing I, w I want to add here is. I think it's also the obligation of, of car manufacturers and suppliers to provide mechanisms of security. And it, it's not something that you should, at the end, uh, something you have to pose on, on the developer at mm. the end. So the infrastructure that you provide in a car should allow you to develop safe and secure solutions. And I think that is the main challenge in that mm. area. As we all know, software development and all the parts and components that we're using, they have to be opened and we have to make sure that this open interface that you need to, to mm. build really applications that are, that, are, that are of relevance for users, for, 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 for car owners and so on. You have really to make sure that there is a certain level of safety and security. And this is not at the end uh, uh, only the, 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 in, the, in the area of, of software developers for Android or iOS or whatever to make sure that their applications are safe. Yeah. But uh, you, you mentioned you have to be open to developers. How open is Bosch, uh, for example, to start, uh, in respect of startups, developers? I mean, I mean we, we are in, a, in a, let's say, in, in, in that area, a specific uh, situation. We also provide in-car HMIs and, and uh, multimedia systems. Uh, we have also an, an own developed, let's say, kind of uh, similar approach like, uh, like uh, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. That is uh, from, from Bosch Car Multimedia. Um, and it provides also an SDK where you can... It, at least stream uh, your information and music and stuff like that and control your applications that you bring your applications within to within the car. Mm. And there's a kind of whitelisting white -listing approach for really making these cars available for that specific uh, HMI. Um, but, but I think uh, um, that's only one thing. On the other hand, Bosch will also provide open, let's say, in-car systems component that you can use for, for building applications on top of it. Okay. And if you would be a developer sitting here in, in the audience, what would you uh, develop? What kind of software? What, what would you recommend? What, what needs what are the needs of the consumers or whatever? I, I think, as, as already mentioned several times, there I think two kind of levels. Uh, currently, Android Auto, for example, provides you only some... You can bring your application into the car, you mm. can do audio streaming, you can do visualization of parts, your application can stream information to an HMI, it will be displayed, you can control your application through an HMI. I think that's the first level is fine, uh, but I think people are, or, what is really interesting is really making connected car applications that need to have access to at least some data that comes from the car, uh, uh, Mobility data that comes from the car consumption, GPS data that's more accurate maybe uh, than what you have on your phone. And, and, and information like this needs to be really provided. And again, under the auto, I think that's on the roadmap. But on the other hand, the, the, the OEMs and car manufacturers, they have to provide the data for these interfaces. Mm. And they have to make sure that on that level, it's safe and secure. Mm. Speaking of data, uh, Gerd, you, uh, Gerd, you are a lawyer. Um, if I drive my car and then my car... Uh, is uh, generating data. Who owns the data? Is it the, the manufacturer? Is it uh, me? Or uh, is it maybe my insurance company? Well, we are talking in Germany, so I take it from a, from a German uh, viewpoint, which is, which is very uh, individual friendly because the data are owned by individuals. Uh, so you have very strong data protection in Germany, it's different elsewhere, so this topic is a very German one, uh, and the, the whole discussion is a very German one. But Germany has to find solutions, I think, to, to open up its traditional um, uh, views on data protection a little bit to uh, new technologies. But basically, the data is owned by the individual uh, driving the cars, at least as it's uh, in, in the car. So, okay. 
Um, and that, of course, puts some restriction on, mm -hmm. on the use of the data. And yeah. of course, you can overcome these restrictions. But the general principle, at least in Germany, is that the data owner has to approve it, has to allow it. So basically, you have to, to tick uh, a case in any application that you use for the car. And um, I mean, this is cumbersome for everybody involved, uh, but perhaps not so bad a thing because it makes people more aware of, of what is going on. Mm. Um, but um, of course, it's it's um, not so nice to have to read through 20 pages of instructions and then at the end uh, take your take your case and then allow the device to work in your car and make your life easier. And I so. guess there are a lot of sensors in the car today and even more tomorrow. So I have to agree to every sensor that it is collecting data. Is this right or? How does it work? No, no, not really, because it's uh, only um, relating to to personal data that, okay. that okay. allow or that, that relate to the person okay. itself. Uh, and um, as, as, yeah, I mean, the, the, the border is not, is not very clear cut, yeah. of course. Um, but of course, you have, you have methods of, of anonymizing data and then be able to use those, which, which, is, uh, which works as, as long as you can't identify the person um, behind those data. But it's um, always a, um, an additional step of treatment of data uh, which needs to be provided and which makes uh, things more complicated of course. I see. So for example, uh, where I drive to, uh, sorry, sorry, okay, uh, where I drive to, is it personal data or is it not? Where, uh, where I will drive to, how fast I go, is it personal data? Well, the speed I would, s I would not say, but um, where, where you go, of course, the, the the, the point in space where you are, that's, okay. that's personal data, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because it would allow to, to track a person's profile, which is definitely personal information. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I guess uh, insurance companies are very interested in data like how fast will I drive? Uh, maybe yes. the car could be a witness in an accident against mm -hmm. me. Um, is this a scenario that is discussed uh, uh, in the industry? It is, it is definitely, um, and insurers are an important player um, in this game, not only in, in the field of um, providing new um, insurance tariffs based on, on data, data analysis. If the insurer knows you are a prudent driver, you have never had any accident, you have never produced any situation likely to produce an accident, they will, of course, be willing to give you better tariffs, um, and that is something that you have to prove by, let's say, putting a little black box in your car and transmitting the data, which is already done. There are insurers that, uh, that uh, offer this model. Um, I don't know whether it's worth the few euros that you save to put this thing in your car and um, um, sort of publish your privacy, but that's a personal question and everybody has to give his personal answer. At least it's, it's offered. But um, there is an, another underlying aspect of, um, of automated driving and of assisted driving uh, relating to insurers, which is m economically much more important to the, to the whole um, industry, because when you have, um, when you have elements of assisted driving, um, or even automatic driving, um, the, the liability for accidents shifts from the driver and the car owner, which is currently the main liable person, to the, uh, to the manufacturer and the, and the supplier, mm -hmm. which is a problem for them, and insurances have not yet developed a right model to ensure this, and this is a, um, of course an economic threat for the suppliers, which they will have to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, Allianz think, uh, thinks already about uh, structuring uh, a solution, I think, and uh, some others are uh, with that. Um, there are some comments that it, it shouldn't be a real problem because um, insurances will be happy to create a fund and having manufacturers pay in for those cases. <laughs> so. So we that, talk, that's, so. that's true. I mean, I have had reactions from the insurance industry that this is, of course, an opportunity to gain new business. So it's, it's not a problem, it's a challenge. Um, but depending on how an insurer is, um, is positioned in the market right now, it's easier for him um, to go for this uh, business or rather not to go for it. Yeah. So we talked a lot of 
Uh, oh, you want to add something? I was only going to mention that actually every new sensor on the car is generating new business models which can be utilized. And the thing is, whether the, the owner of the data, the user is benefited from him, or is actually we have corporate silos where they divert them from one to the other to, mm. to generate additional revenue. That is something which should be the challenge for the legislators. And so what, uh, who will profit from the connected car in the end? So, so I think there are some interesting scenarios also for consumers, uh, uh, things they profit from. Uh, there are also a lot of scenarios where other parties profit, like maybe Google, maybe the car manufacturer, maybe uh, insurance companies. So what are the, the, the good scenarios? I think uh, from what we have learned from history, the more transparent and open an environment is, the friendlier it is for the end user, for the consumer in the specific case. And uh, when you own the data, like it, was, like it was mentioned, you can decide how they will be used and you can, they can be utilized to add value and make your life easier and more comfortable. Maybe not in the financial aspect directly, but make it easier in everything else, as a convenience and as comfort and safety. Um, when, you have the core, when you have the data sent to somewhere in the cloud where you don't have an idea, like it's happening with most of the cloud applications nowadays, and they are sent from one corporation to the other, then actually they are being used maybe some against you, like what's happening with the insurance or with the advertisers or many other, other different models. And to a big extent, that is that's regulated by the legislators, how the lawmakers will make the privacy and the transparency and they will enable it or not. You know other good scenarios <laughs> or Perhaps bad a, ones. A word of ca caution in there. <laughs> <laughs> My role, I guess. Um, but if you consider the car as a multi-sensor device, not only censoring for the functionality of the, the driving functions, but also to orient itself in the world, mm. especially in uh, auto piloted driving scenarios. Then you have uh, many things, many sensors, uh, collecting large information or bulk, bulk information of the environment live into the cloud. Somehow, and this will, yeah, you can perhaps anonymize a little bit to protect the driver, but who's protecting the, the rest of the world? that is being observed by multiple cars, especially if you open up the design of, of such systems um, that might um, perhaps uh, generate some goal conflicts or trade-offs for mm. the different parties. Mm. How much of the data should be in the back ends mm. and how much of the data should be remain in the car. Mm. So this openness has its challenges also there. Yeah. And the smartphone is a large sensor censoring your environment, mm. but cars carry a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Several cameras all, all the time on and observing the environment. That can also be another control point for, for the manufacturer. So if, if you manage, uh, if you manage to ch uh, this uh, challenge for, for your advantage, um, it could be uh, a great chance to um, yeah, have an uh, opportunity to make data worth uh, as a differentiation point. For example, I am buying my BMW because it is the data safest place I can, uh, I can communicate. Or, uh, you know, I think um, it could be a great chance for, to, to embrace it, not only as a danger, and, but really to say, okay, if I build the best encrypted solution, my product is just better. Mm -hmm. So we, we see that IT... Just one reaction. Yeah. I don't know whether any of the uh, persons in the room understand the security model of Android fully and what does your uh, Android communicates with the rest of the world. So this is a challenge as well, to provide easy to understand security concepts even for non-technician persons, because otherwise you can't decide on that. If you don't understand the difference be between the BMW and the VW security concept data-wise, how should you decide on that? So. This is also a tricky question, isn't it? <laughs> if you see, uh, if we look at the, the uh, for example, other industries which, which are um, disrupted by IT, like uh, the commerce space or uh, a lot of um, what Google is doing, um, in the end, always uh, the, the platform owner wins, uh, it seems like. Uh, this, uh, if you look at Amazon, if you look at Google, the platform owner has, uh, is in the powerful position. So 
in your opinion, I'm asking all of you, who will be the, the platform owner in, in the cloud? Will, will it be Google or will it be some uh, alliance of uh, OEMs or who will be in charge here? I think really a difficult question, but that's why everybody tries to, to think what to say. It's not something you can clear out, like everybody was believing 20 years ago that Microsoft will dominate everywhere with the operating systems, and now we see that actually their share in the market is, has been reduced greatly. It's really something which is open, you cannot really say about it. When it comes to um, the two big challengers here, um, I heard uh, some comments from the industry that um, the OEMs try to be agnostic, meaning they do not decide for each one of these religions. Um, so, um, yeah, the, the common uh, uh, goal here is to be open for both worlds, right? So this is basically decided that uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto should both be uh, available over the same device. I think that has been decided, hasn't it? <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, but how, how, how deep will they uh, get into the car? So, um, yeah, Android and, and also um, iOS will be integrated, the, the smartphones will be integrated with, with, I think, all cars in the end. But how, how deep will they get into the car, uh, into to the car's data? Yeah, you as Bosch should I, I uh, think, uh, worry about this. I uh, think suppliers or uh, car manufacturers they have a great uh, need to support as much data consumers and, and platforms as possible. You cannot lock yourself in and say, let's say we only support uh, Android Auto and we don't care about Apple CarPlay and maybe in 10 years it's a different kind of player that comes into, comes into, uh, comes into the, to, to the world. So I think from that point of view, um, I think there is currently, as we all see in the, in the mobile market, there is no clear domination. Um, there are goods, uh, pros and cons. I think there are markets where there is a preference for, for, for one, of, one of the other. And so at the end, I think you have to be open. I think that's, that is really one of the main, most crucial parts. You have to be open uh, to uh, what consumers at the end have and what they are using and not uh, impose something uh, because you say, I'm only supporting this kind of consortium or this kind of uh, production uh, platform. Otherwise, you make it a fight about brand loyalty. You know, if you uh, make the customer decide uh, what do you like better, uh, like BMW or Apple. <laughs> but, but wouldn't you say uh, that the role of the suppliers, of the tier one suppliers, will dramatically increase because they they um, gain such a such a responsible part of the business and influence this part of the business? I think yes, uh, there are good chances that, they, that, they, that their role kind of increases and their importance because they provide smart solutions, they provide connected solutions. It's not only the car manufacturer at the end, but at the present, I mean the car manufacturer is the, and the, the, the company that sells the car, that designs good parts of it, but a lot of parts are completely done by suppliers already. So from that point of view, but, but at the end, uh, I think... Um, um, it, it, it will turn out what consumers want to have. Uh, and if they want to have this kind of platform support or this kind of thing, I think this is also where suppliers or OEMs have to go because this is at the end why people buy a car. They will, they will buy a car because they can bring their applications within the car. They have a nice uh, added value application that using connected car data. They have some additional things. I think from that point of view, this kind of consumer-centric thing is very to be open and support as much as possible. But I think we have two levels. But, it, excuse me, but is it possible right now? Because I don't think I can walk in a showroom and I'm telling them I want the entertainment system in the car to be from Apple or to be from Google or what else. I think there are already HMI that support both. Yeah, so, um, so you're not locked in and this supports all your Android or what. Um, uh, I think many suppliers like Bosch, they have for sure their own kind of uh, SDKs that they provide for their specific uh, devices that are line fit uh, for, 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 for production or even in the aftermarket area. So I think from that point of view, but you have to make sure if you provide an, uh, an SDK, whatever, where's the business case for developers that they're building applications on top of it? I think we are uh, talking about two different levels here. We are talking about integration of the smartphone and using the apps in, in the car. This is 
maybe the, maybe the easy part and the answer is already given. Yeah, we are integrating Google and we are integrating Apple, of course. But uh, there's also the, the question of who will utilize the data of the, of the sensors of the car. So um, there are a lot of sensors in the car and they are getting more and more. And will you, you for example, as Bosch or will an OEM will uh, um, allow a Google access to this data to, to make analysts? Uh, uh, I, I think that, that is exactly um, a good question. I think uh, suppliers or manufacturers they want and will and are using the data that you uh, produce while you're using, driving a connected car. This is already a fact. Um, and they use it for their purposes, BMW, for example, with all their connected solutions. And they have a very aggressive kind of uh, point about that. Others are more, uh, more uh, uh, let's say, more relaxed to that. But I think at the end, uh, car manufacturers will, uh, if possible, use the data that is available. It depends also on business model. If you are talking about, let's say, pay as you drive, or pay how you drive, eventually the car manufacturer or supplier doesn't have any access to the data. Yeah? So I think maybe um, Google, for example, they are really experts on big data. They, they really know how to deal with, with big data. So isn't it maybe... Um, just a matter of time um, until they get to, to analyze this data? I mean, um, I, I think if, if you can compare to a certain extent, like, like maybe uh, like, 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 uh, Google is tra using their offering products and services for tracking stuff in the, in the area of web. And I think that's the same thing is, uh, will happen for mobility data. Yeah? Mm. They, Google and, and Apple and whoever will provide these SDKs they will always try to use uh, for their purposes this data because they, do, they are doing it not for, for the sake of whatever. They want to, at the end, uh, make money with it and mm. any kind of benefit. Mm. Okay. Yeah, maybe let's, back, uh, get back, let's get back to the Android outer of today. Um, what, what is possible with it? How open is it? Uh, what can I do as a developer? I think Something I heard already from you is not that much because there are a lot of restrictions. Uh, yeah, maybe what, what do you, you think? Or <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think right now it is still a pretty new development. So it is not on the same state like it is on the smartphones. There are also many things which need to be resolved and how actually the OEA manufacturers, are going, how many things are going to allow you, how much access to the, to the car sensors. Because right now, you can mostly use uh, the geolocation. You can see where is the car, you can share your, some data between your smartphone and the head unit, the car's head unit, but you cannot have access to low-level sensors, for instance, mm. to know what is the, um, how much gas you still have on the car. These are things which are, I think are going to be discussed and resolved in the following releases. It's not something which actually you can do right now. It's more like uh, exploring and maybe transferring some applications from the smartphone on the head unit. The obvious argument is always the safety case if you uh, go on the uh, actuators, but um, I would really uh, hope for uh, some more um, openness when it comes to uh, uh, developing uh, goals, you know, to work, to be a little bit, bit more open, maybe with an NDA or other uh, uh, measures of, uh, to, to secure that it's not abused by any hackers or anything mm. um, because this is the obvious like, uh, scenario nobody wants that everybody's playing around with uh, um, braking and gas systems um, to mess something up but um, for our uh, research uh, uh, case we can say we, we asked everybody every OEM and there was one um, with uh, two letters that uh, was open enough for, um, for all the um, uh, research uh, project, so we really had a problem getting the proprietary CAN data, and this mm -hmm. is uh, absolute uh, the basic element of of working with a car. So you are um, you're designing more openness from the car makers or from Google side, or the car makers. You you know. Well, we we need cooperation on an OAM level or on mm -hmm. a, a tier one level who mm -hmm. built the. Uh, ECUs, um, but um, yeah, I think the te there is a te strong tendency that um, yeah, uh, OEMs have an interest of working with other companies, but it's um, 
It is one of the main controlling points, and I think the, uh, on a strategic level, the uh, uh, view is always, uh, the strategic decision is always based on these control points. What do I give away, and uh, is it hurting my business on the long run if I cannot control my own environment? And I think uh, what we see with the HMI is uh, a little bit of both worlds. We have this uh, interfaces and the APIs to um, yeah, have some uh, um, eco, uh, some some landscape for development, but still, um, if we're honest, uh, nobody will give away full uh, control over the HMI he invested in, and will always have his onboard um, um, functions as well. If we speak about maps, this becomes really obvious. Uh, as soon uh, as long as we don't have a full coverage. Uh, um, and bandwidth, we, we need, uh, we will always have onboard maps uh, if we use it for navigation, won't we? So. And um, are there, um, so how, how restrict, restricted is the system today, uh, the, the, the Android Auto? So, uh, from, from Google said, if I could look into the smartphone space, if you use Android on a phone, you have to decide if you use all the Google services or none of them. None of them. Are there similar restrictions um, for Android Auto? Or is it really an open system? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Actually, right now it is more about the infotainment part of the car and less about the lower level information you can actually get from the car sensors. And that is another big discussion also about security, about the data privacy, and so on. Technically. It is more how, how much the OEMs are going to, to allow to information to get and also what Google will want to get from their side. So it is more a matter of politics than actually the technology itself. Yeah, that's, that's all about it. Okay. Yeah. And from, yeah. Just perhaps as a side note here, um, Android Auto is not the only uh, possibility to, to think of Android and cars. Okay. So you might consider um, ECUs as well that uh, at least partly run by Android. And this is not visible perhaps for you as an end user or as an external developer, but this is a way um, of the, this is a little bit, <laughs> um, this is a way of the OEMs perhaps to attract a little bit of um, knowledge outside there, developing applications within their cars, mm -hmm. under full control, but nevertheless on Android base, and uh, therefore perhaps it is an opportunity as well. I see. You want to, uh, okay. <laughs> um, something I heard from the industry is that um, a lot of the big uh, OEMs in Germany, like BMW and Daimler, they're integrating more IT into, into the companies because they want not this black box, they want to control and they want to, to understand what technology they have inside their cars because the technology is getting more uh, important as a differentiator. So maybe you, you, uh, you as Bosch, uh, do you think that your role will change in this, um, in this trend? Because if I have more IT in, in my company and will develop more, more of my software or more of my hardware, maybe the, the companies will buy more from the smaller suppliers to, to manufacturers in, in their own company. I think um, suppliers as, as well as OEMs are in a process of, of transformation. Because originally they, they made cars and components, then they started to do smart components with software on it, IT becomes more and more important. And now we are talking about ecosystems, platforms, that comes also uh, uh, with a great support also of OEMs and, and suppliers. So from that point of view, that's a migration process that is also affecting how you uh, develop things, the lifetime of development, product development, must be do totally uh, more aggressive, more agile. So from that point of view, there's a, there's a big transformation process. It's not only in the automotive area, it's a, a big buzzword, industry 4.0 maybe. Mm. It's the same thing where smart sensors are be becoming more and more integrated in production processes for control, for whatever. Mm. And you are looking also for developers, startups to buy? Or <laughs> can you say that? I'm, I mean, Bosch is, I think, very known for, for buying companies, if it makes sense. Mm. So from that point of view, um, we, are, we are currently uh, at Mobility Media, uh, we are a startup, we were founded really to, to develop 
also uh, connectivity solutions um, in the automotive area. But yeah, I think it's quite natural for, for big players how to, how to enlarge and how to uh, do acquisitions. Mm. And what have you changed in your, in your process of the company? So, uh, for example, I heard that Tesla can... Uh, sorry, I just have to mention Tesla all the time. <laughs> because I think it's a fascinating company. But I think that, uh, that they... Um, I heard that they um, uh, can update their, their uh, the software update. With, within uh, minutes via internet. So I think there are quite different product cycles uh, that the industry is used to, like five years or something. So what is, how is Bosch reacting? How is the I think it, it really it depends on what kind of components you will update, uh, let's say, uh, the firmware stack. Yeah, so I think there are some sensors uh, or where probably you, you have to have really a high level of security and you have also to make sure that you control the complete process of how the software gets via the air to the car and then applied and deployed to any kind of component. I think it really depends on, on what kind of, of level uh, or component you want really to, to do an over-the-air software update. I think for an AGMI, might be okay, but um, I think you probably, you, there must be really good reasons to have that open door for, let's say, an ABS sensor or EPS, whatever, or your brake system or airbag, airbag uh, uh, ECU. So from that point of view, um, really, there are parts that, that can easily, uh, or relatively easily you can apply over the air updates. Other parts, I think, you should really go to a work, uh, workshop and, and then they fix or, or update things. Mm -hmm. And perhaps one final word on Tesla. I mean, <laughs> I, I also find that there are um, an exciting company with exciting products, but what they have done so far is producing niche products, really nice niche products. Um, and the car manufacturers that we know in Germany and Europe and elsewhere in the world, uh, of course, cater for the for the entire um, wide of, of products. Okay. Yeah. So that's the big difference between those. <laughs> so our time is uh, nearly up. Um, is, are there any questions in the audience? Um, to ah, okay, there's someone. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, just a second. I think in the last row or someone. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, one, one question. So for the moment, let's, let's forget that we are in Germany and talking about <laughs> security. Uh, let's talk about uh, data. So you, you said that uh, uh, car, uh, connected car, the data that we have, that, that's really what, what's interesting, you know, especially for the fleet management and enterprise solutions. Um, so I'm wondering about standards of uh, those data. So, uh, yeah, the next question for the audience, did anybody did some work with uh, OBD ports? Uh, yep. So, uh, yeah, actually, so, <laughs> so uh, I'm just wondering, not, not, a, not just about uh, standardized data between European car manufacturers, but worldwide. So is there any kind of alliance on, on that side? Is Google working on, on this one as well? Actually, we do some, uh, some work on uh, OBD and what you, the SDKs you get from Google on Android Auto. It is not, uh, you cannot have access on this data, it's on a lower level. Because most of them, they, they access also devices which can affect the security of the car. And normally all these enterprise solutions, they use their own, uh, they use their own dongle. It is not yet to the level where you can get access to what you can get from OBD2. And it's not standardized, I mean, to the point that the American manufacturers, they have miles per gallon for consumption, while the European ones, they have kilometers per liter, it's not even standardized to that level. It needs quite some way to go. But for enterprise, yeah, you go to a lower level than what you get from Android. I hope it answered your question. So you want to add something? I think uh, what also part uh, of your question. I think there are uh, attempts by OEMs also to have a control on that and provide at least their consortiums and, and kind of alliances that they want to provide a kind of API where you can get access to connected data so that you don't 
they want to try or they're trying to limit the access, for example, via OBD2 plug in the car to access data. So there are some kind of attempts to do that and there are some kinds of um, OEM driven uh, kind of uh, approaches that you will get some kind of APIs in the near future. But at the end, that limits a lot of uh, business models that you want to have and application uh, purposes uh, if you have not a real-time API and stuff like that. So from that point of view, I think there are a lot of OEMs really thinking about, especially for the OB2 case, uh, how to limit access to the data. And I think that is, um, from from legal point of view, not so easy um, because they can't. Also, they do as they could. Um, but uh, really, I think uh, we, there will be, from also from 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 electronic point of view, from from component point of view, there are limitations probably foreseeable in the future where that might be a problem. And another problem would also be that. Uh, Bosch would lose a lot of business on the long term when there are as cheaper diagnostic hardware available everywhere. And uh, yeah, that's one of the control points. So there's another question. Yeah, well, it goes around the same topic. Um, how does it relate to the W3C uh, to, uh, efforts to establish um, a web vehicle API, so more on an abstract level, so that the developer can come from the top to a standardized API, mean, and then... Yeah, you mean the about the, the web of, of things? Well, there's a, I, I think there's a working group that does something on vehicles, but how does it relate to, or how is it going until the OEMs? Yeah, actually, it is more like, uh, from my knowledge, it is more like a parallel uh, project, and it actually it specifies how what would be the interface between specific devices or in, inside the car with external services built on top of HTTP. So it's, it is supposed to standardize some things, and but actually over there you still have to build yourself the interface between, um, let's say, the web server, which is communicating with the rest of the world and the low-level devices in most of the cases. Unless the OEMs, they have already done this, to work, this job for you. They have given you the, the device drivers, which will enable you to build your services on top of it. Someone want to, something to add to this question? So, so I have a question to you, the audience. Um, who is interested in developing for Android Auto? Please, uh, let me see your hands. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay, so you're attending this session because of, and who uh, actually did something in the space already? Oh, okay, not bad. So other questions? I don't see any. <laughs> okay, then I think we, we had it. Some, some last words about <laughs> the future of, of everything, the, the industry and who it's, will rule uh, us all. Yeah, it is, I don't know whether Google will rule us all, but I think we are still... <laughs> yeah, bad words. <laughs> they are listening to us. <laughs> Actually, we're still on the level where um, Nokia was making cell phones in the 90s. It's, we, st we still have many, many things to see. And as we saw from the past, Nokia is not the dominant player nowadays in the smartphone market anymore. Yeah, but Nokia is also a great example of how you can change your business model to uh, other things. For example, Nokia here, uh, HD maps will be the next big thing. So. I think, no, it's a great example because they always knew how to reinvent themselves from uh, uh, boots to cell phones to maps. And um, I think, uh, yeah, there's a great chance for everybody, but uh, competition is healthy as long as you stay up to, up to the task of reinventing yourself. Yeah. Your last words. <laughs> 
there are many things to do from my point of view, security-wise, not only in the automotive domain, but also M2M and others. So if you concentrate together, and there are efforts from the car makers, from the suppliers, from the smaller companies, so we're working with them together happily, and we see progress. So I'm still hopeful. <laughs> I hope that we don't all go to die in our cars. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One time at a time. Yeah. So um, I think also connected cars, not only have you heard a lot of uh, limitations, restrictions and dangers, I think it opens up also a lot of space for, for really cool applications that you can build, a lot of data that you can use for really things that uh, really bring benefit to users. And uh, you also have to keep in mind that it's not only always this user-centric part that we have maybe talked today, but connected cars also uh, like uh, giving you information about where there might be traffic jams and uh, road conditions and stuff like that. It's not only like controlling everything and tracking everything what you're doing, it's also at the end bringing you benefit. And for sure we have to all to make sure as we probably, are, not only the manufacturer suppliers, but also users have to make sure that, that there's a certain level of, of confidentiality and uh, security is applied. Yeah? As you as a user, at the end you buy the products uh, that provide uh, levels of security that are okay. Yeah, so, it's your decision. Well, I think uh, we talked about big data and thought about big data should not be the idea of, well, there is a lot of data, what can I get out of that? But rather, how can I develop a product that makes uh, customers and clients' lives easier and better? And I think we, we heard it before, that's the right approach. Um, to, to have a, a consumer and, and buyer uh, and client related and, and centered um, perspective and, and to focus on that and develop from, from that end. And it's um, in that context not only the end user, you and me having a car uh, and have, wanting to have it fancier and more practical, but it's the, the down to earth um, fleet management that you mentioned, for example, that can l make people's lives easier and better without them seeing it even. So let's all think about how we can improve our lives with a big data. <laughs> and uh, thank you, panelists. Thank you uh, for attending. And yeah, see you soon.